Another number for you, Brady. I'm, I'm loving this number. This number is, is great. It's, it's so cool. One, four, two, eight, five, seven. I want you to um, just give me a number. Thirteen. Um, okay, fine. Thirteen. I'm going to multiply this by thirteen. Okay. Okay. I can't do that, in my head. So let's now I take the last six numbers. There's six numbers here, right? I'm going to take the last six of these and I'm going to add it to the first one. So that's one plus eight five seven one four one. Now I can do that. That is eight five seven one four two. Which, if you look carefully, is a permutation of this guy. So it's one four two eight five seven. Give me another number, Brady. Give me another number. <laughs> 112. Right, 112. Very good. So 142, 857 times 112 equals. Right, let's do it. Okay, I noticed something about 112. You're a pain for choosing 112, but we see something else. Okay, 112, I think, must be a multiple of 7. In fact, it is. <laughs> right, it's ruined it. With it. What, do multiples of 7 bring this? Multiples of 7 are the only ones. If they do something else, they do something else. Let's, let's, let's run with it. Let's run with it. Okay. Multiples of seven, and we'll do it. We'll take the last six. Okay, 15 plus 9999984 nine, 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 equals 999999. Nine, 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 nine. Okay? Give it, we'll do one more. One more okay? 18. 18. Okay, not a multiple of seven, thank you. <laughs> 2 million, 571, 426. Do the same thing, take the last six, and I get 5714288. Which is one, four, two, eight, five, seven. If I take any anything that's not a multiple of seven, anything that's not a multiple of seven, and I multiply this number by it, and then I do this procedure of, uh, of sort of taking the last six and adding the previous one or the other ones, I always get a permutation of one, four, two, eight, five, seven. In particular, if I take the numbers one to six, the six nut digits here, and I multiply. Uh, this by them, I will always get a permutation of 157. So, for example, obviously, if I multiply it by 1, I get 142857. That's trivial. If I multiply it by 2, I get 285714, which again is a permutation. Multiply it by 3, I get 428571, and so on and so forth. And I can keep doing this. And if you go above 7, when, if you go above seven, then you, you need to do this business of sort of taking the last six and then adding it. But you always get this, uh, this, this cyclic structure. This is an example of a cyclic number, in fact. They're common. Um, right. Not particularly. Okay. So this is the only one that doesn't begin in zero. The next one, actually, after this one, is 0588235294. One one seven six four seven. This is another cyclic number. Okay, this has got uh, sixteen digits. You play the same game. You can take in this now. You would multiply it between. Uh, what's important is the fact it's got sixteen digits. So if you do multiples of seventeen, this goes wrong. But if uh, if you do one to sixteen, you'll get a permutation of it, and then you can play this game as well, uh, but with sixteen rather than six digits. So so here's the other weird thing about it. If you multiply it by any multiple of seven, you always get these all the nines. If I multiply this guy, this has got seven, this has got sixteen digits. If I multiply this by seventeen, I'll get all the nines. Why does it work? Okay, let's see why it works. I'm going to need more paper. <laughs> okay, well the important thing about that number, that one one four two eight five seven, is it appears in the uh, decimalization of a seventh. Okay, if I take a seventh, right? Then a seventh is equal to 0 0.142857, 142857, and so on. Keeps repeating. And this is critical. Why is this critical? Well, now think what happens when I multiply this by 10. I multiply it by 10. 10 sevenths. If I multiply it by 10, all these numbers just shift along one, right? And now, but what do you know about this? This is just 10 sevenths is 1 plus 3 sevenths, right? Okay, so from this you can infer that 3 sevenths is equal to 0 0.4285714. And the point is, as you can see, the, the multiplying by 10 just shifted everything along 1, okay? And then 
we pull off this original one, but it got replaced by another one and getting shifted along. And then you're left with a permutation. It works perfectly. And it keeps working. Now we can do the next one, say. Um, multiply it by 10 again. So do multiply it by 10. Do 30 sevenths. And I get, again, I just shift everything. Just gets shifted along by one. But this, I know, is 4 plus 2 sevenths. So I get rid of the 4s. And I conclude that 2 sevenths is just 0.285714. And again, it was just everything got shifted by one, but because it was the stuff that you removed that replaces it, you just end up with permutations. And that's why it works. That's essentially the essence of why it works. And actually, from this structure, you can see why, um, what the structure of all these cyclic numbers has to be. So you take a prime number, you take its reciprocal, 1 over a prime, okay? It doesn't work for all prime numbers, but for some prime numbers it does. Actually, we'll come back to that in a minute. But you'll get something naught times some, your cyclic number, and your cyclic number gets repeated, okay? This is a p minus 1, a number of length p minus 1. So here it was a seventh, and these, these, this blocks had a length of, a, of 6, okay? So if I multiply this by 10, to the power p minus 1, in this case by 10 to the 6, I get 10 to the p minus 1 over p is equal to, well, my cyclic number, point my cyclic number. So you get, all the, you get the same thing. Now you take these two away from one another and you conclude that your cyclic number is equal to 10 to the p minus 1 minus 1 over p. And this is where those nines appear. Okay, because if I multiply this by p, the prime number, which in this case was 7, or any multiple of 7, I get something that's related to the 9s, right? Because it's 10 to the sum power minus 1, which is going to be all the 9s. Right? So that's why it works. All the cyclic numbers have this form. Not all prime numbers will give a cyclic number when you construct this guy. So the prime numbers that work, that give you, if you construct this, that will give you a cyclic number, are p equals 7, 7 17, 19, 23, 29, they're the first few, there's more, okay. Are there an infinite number? There are an infinite number, yes. Um, in fact, and this is, this is one of these things that I just think, number theorists, how do they, they, they dream up these things? We even know how many, what percentage of prime numbers uh, give cyclic numbers when you construct this. It's 37.395% roughly. Of, uh, of prime numbers will give cyclic numbers in this way. I mean, <laughs> why? We saw how if we multiply it by multiples of seven and then we do our little construction that we discussed that we get back all the nines, okay? All the nines appears everywhere in this. What else can you do? Let's look at it. One, four, two, eight, five, seven. Okay, let me take the first two numbers. Let me take the next two, 28. Let me take the next one, 57. I'll add them all together. Look what I get. Have some of that. <laughs> all the nines, right? Let me do this. Let me take three. 142 plus 857. I add them together. What do I get? 999. Right? Let me even do this. Let me do four, right? I get 1428 plus 5714. And I have to use every number the same number of times. 2857. What's that? 999. Nine. No. It's amazing, it's amazing. I just love it. What is going on? It's all related, of course, to this very special property that it's basically these numbers can be written as 10 to some power minus 1 divided by the, um, by the prime number. But it's clearly just, uh, you know, so it's, it's all built in there. And they all have this property. They'll all do this. Um, you can also work in different bases. You know, you can have cyclic numbers in different bases. What happens then is the cyclic numbers, instead of being, we're, we're, we're working in base 10, as we're familiar with, but you just change this number from 10, and then you get the cyclic numbers again. Okay, you can play the same games, and they, and they, but of course they're cyclic in that particular base. And, and instead of getting all the 9s, you might get all the 3s or all the 4s, depending on whatever base you're in. <laughs> it's amazing, though, but it doesn't even stop there. There's one more quirkiness that I've got to show you. 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7. Okay, now we're going to take the first three numbers, 1, 4, 2. We're going to square it to 8, 5, 7 squared. What do we get? 7, 1, 4, 2, 8, 5. What's that? 
it's another permutation of our one, four, two, eight, five, seven. It's amazing. And this number, actually, it's, it, it, we're not the only people to have noticed that this, this number has sort of quirky qualities. There's something called an Enneagram. Now, this is some crazy Armenian spiritual leader from, like, wartime uh, called Gurdjieff. And uh, he basically was able to explain everything in life and the cosmos through this number. It's total nonsense. The less said, the better. But he did draw a nice, pretty picture, which I think we can draw, which sort of just gives us our last little thing to do with this, this nice number. So here we go. I draw, that is a rubbish circle, but we'll do. We just draw nine up there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we're gonna, multiples of three, we're not interested in, boring, get rid of them. Not that any numbers are boring, obviously. But, uh, and we just draw a triangle, okay. Now the remaining numbers, we just sort of draw this nice pretty picture through them. One, to four, to two, to eight, to five, to seven, and then back to one again. And this is called an Enneagram. And apparently the properties of this can be related to cells and all sorts. But less said about the better, but it's a nice picture, isn't it? So 142857, cycle number, amazing, I love it.